Welcome back to my MVA course called Building Recommendation Systems in Azure. I am still Olivia Closer, and we have now reached the final module of this MVA course. This module is about the Azure Marketplace. So specifically for those developers who can't be bothered to build a module in Azure Machine Learning Studio. So this module, as I said, uh, will be about the Azure Marketplace, so what the Azure Marketplace actually has to offer if it's about recommendations. And then uh, we will finish this module as well as this MVA course with some further resources that might be of help to you in, in uh, future projects. Just a little recap what the machine learning process is usually like. You start off with your raw data that you have to clean up as well. This cleaning data takes up usually 80% of your time. Based on the cleaned data that you have, you then build and evaluate your model. Um, and then afterwards, once you have built your model, which you frequently update as well, you predict um, well, future or incoming customers um, desired items, for instance, or in this case, you publish this as a web service. In this module, we will go through one specific application where, um, where a couple of those, uh, where all of those components are already coded in. Um, so with the data, you start off with a catalog of data and usage data. In other words, you need some static data. So what is the item? What other um, information do you have about the item? So thinking back to the past three modules, we had the bike data. So uh, this would be the catalog data. You have your certain tube and some more property information about this. You have your tires, you have your wires, you have your bikes and so on and so forth. Usage data, on the other hand, would be what user has used which model, which user has looked at a certain model for a long time, and ultimately, which user has bought which uh, other model. Then moving on to the third step, the building and evaluating model step, um, we can see that in the application, there will be two main methods or functions. So obviously you need to build your recommender or build your model. And then on the other hand, you update it as well as you have more data coming in as well. Then finally, you want to use this recommendation engine. So you get a recommendation, for instance, based on which items have been looked at so far. And also, you want to get a recommendation for a specific user based on the historical data that we already have on the user. So let's get started with the demo itself. We are now again in the machine learning studio that we've seen beforehand, the home page. So far, we've often used the studio itself. Now I want to go into the gallery. Um, in the gallery, as I mentioned beforehand, we see a lot of experiments that we can reuse as well. For instance, the Titanic binary classification model. Um, but then the other things that are of most interest to us right now are the machine learning APIs. For instance, phase APIs are really useful. If you don't know it yet, how old.net, for instance, is based on the or is using the phase APIs. Speech APIs, there you can. Um, well, recognize what has been spoken as well. And the one that is uh, relevant to us in this MVA course is the Recommendations API. You can see some description as well as the frequently brought together recommendations that you often see in uh, online shops, for instance. Um, we start off with just signing up over here, and we are getting directed to the Microsoft Azure Marketplace straight to the recommendations data. I'm already signed in and therefore have already used this API. You can see that the first 10,000 transactions per month are for free. If you're using more than 100,000 transactions per month, then you will have to pay. Going back to the gallery, you can see some more information or some references. Um, I 
go to sample applications and we are redirected to a OneDrive folder. There you can download um, one sample solution which is making use or which is using the recommendations API. I have already downloaded this OneDrive zip file, extracted it and opened it in Visual Studio. What it actually contains is two data sets, very small I have to admit. Um, the first one being some small usage data. So as I said beforehand, this one contains data on the customers itself. So we start off with some customer ID and some ID for something or for an often item that the customer is interested in, or here in this case has actually purchased. Um, this can be extended obviously with some rating or how long this customer has looked at the item itself and so on and so forth. The, the other small data set that it contains is some catalog. So this is what I usually call some static data. We have this catalog of items. So we can see um, some item ID and a name to this ID. Here in this case, it, we are dealing with a book, as we can see in the following one. Uh, the book is called Clara Callan, and it is followed by some more book, um, by some further description of the book. Here we can see that it contains some information on the author, here in this case, Richard Wright, the publisher, and as well as the year that it was published in, and so on and so forth. Moving on to the C Sharp file called Sample App, uh, we can see the namespace Azure ML re uh, recommender sample app, and it starts off with the main function. We can see that there is some access data actually required, starting off with the email address as well as with some account key. Where I find this is in the Azure Marketplace again. So I'm already signed in. I just go to my account and can see some information about myself as well as the primary account key. Here I can also find my account keys again. This is required to actually make use of the recommendation API. We can see that this sample app is being initialized using my email address as well as my account key. And then afterwards, we are creating a model container. This container is necessary to import first some data and then build the model inside the container based on the data that has been imported. Going back to the main function, we can see at first, okay, the small catalog data is being imported followed by the small um, usage files as well. The importing data is closely followed by actually building the model here that we can see right here. The function build model actually only contains or uh, requires two arguments. Here in this case, the model ID as in the ID number of the model container. So specifying where the data has already been imported followed by some description. This one is then, uh, while it is being built, um, the process can be monitored as we can see right here, giving us some checkup how far we are that the program is actually still running. Moving forward, we can see that there is another argument called, or another function called sage.updateModel. This one is not necessarily, uh, or is not really that necessary right here because mm, there is not much incoming data as of now. But this is just to highlight how to use that model once you have a lot of new incoming data as well as incoming feedback as well, whether our recommendations to that user was correct or not correct. Now that we have imported the data as well as built a model on top of that data, or in other words, trained our model on top of that data, now we can test it or not necessarily test it, but try to get some recommendations of or from that model based on the items that we have here right now. 
Here we start off with some catalog items. Here we call this seed items, as we can see here. Um, this catalog or this list contains two catalog items. Um, the two catalog items we can we see again Clara Callan and someone who has bought a book called Restraint of Beasts as well. Based on these two purchases, what other um, items would our recommender um, recommend to that person? Um, so we can see that the following method is being used in Vogue recommendations based on the model that we have, model ID, as well as the seed items that we have here. We can have a closer look at that method. So I'm going on F12. And we can see that invoke recommendations actually calls another method called get recommendations. Going into get recommendation, we can see again the model ID is being used, some item ID list, so here the catalog items, and how many recommendations we actually want to give out later on as well. Is it, do we want to give a recommendation of 10 items or 5 items, and so on and so forth. Going back to the main function, we can see that invoke recommendations has been called twice. The only difference being here in the back, false or true. Meaning here, we are dealing with a set of two catalog items. In the first one, it considers just those two items separately. Based on someone who has bought the first book called Clara Callan, what would you recommend? Based on the fact that a customer has bought only Restraint of Bees, what then would you recommend? The second call to invoke recommendations actually sets the last boolean to true. This one considers the two items together and then based on someone who has bought Clara Callan and Restraint of Bees, what would you recommend then? So this is a recommendation based only on items so far. The last use case of this recommendations API is invoke user recommendations that we can hear right now, uh, see right now. This one is giving recommendations to one specific user. Based on all the data that we have on that particular user, what else would, you, would we recommend to that user in specific? The, so here we can see again the model ID and here followed by the user ID, model ID of the container where the data is as well as the model, the built or the trained recommend, uh, recommendation model. And this one is the ID of the user that we want to see uh, what else we could recommend to. So let's just run this application. We click here on start. So we can see that this model is being currently um, created, a container specifically called recommender model. Then the catalog and usage data has been imported and now the building model has been started. Now we are just monitoring it. And this is the monitoring will carry on every five seconds. The building of the model has ended with success and now it is being updated. Once it is updated, we are getting, we are trying out with the recommendations as well, given a single seed item and now with a set of seed items being the two catalog items together. And now we have moved on to actually getting user recommendation that we can see here in the end based on yeah, a given user ID. We have now seen that we can easily integrate a recommendations or the provided recommendations API in any app that we have. Moving on to some further resources if you want to get more information. Usually, if you're dealing with machine learning, the question is always, which algorithm should I use for which sort of problem? So I can highly recommend this algorithm cheat sheet um, being produced by our data science product group as well. Furthermore, there is one free ebook which goes step by step through all sorts of different scenarios as well. 
And finally, I blog frequently about machine learning. Um, I do a machine learning series as well about binary classification, for instance, and we have a lot of blog articles or blog posts as well based on what we've covered here in this MVA course. Obviously, I highly recommend the machine learning blog itself. Here, the second one, aka.ms slash ML blog. Here you can read about customer stories, how they incorporated Azure machine learning in their productive environment. Wrapping up this MVA course called Building Recommendation Systems in Azure, we started off in the first module with an easy introduction to machine learning and recommendation engines in general. In the second module, we looked into a particular scenario, targeted marketing, um, more into, well, we want to send out thousands of emails to thousands of people. Uh, we want to send out one newsletter to thousands of customers, but we want to reach the right people. So using binary classification, we have identified which users or which customers are very likely to buy one more item from our shop. In the third module, we have dealt with collaborative filtering, one of the main recommendation approaches. And in particular, from the technology point of view, we have looked into R Studio and how to integrate R into Azure Machine Learning. In the fourth module and the second but last um, module, we have looked into content-based filtering and how to extend it to a hybrid approach, meaning content-based plus collaborative filtering. This is um, and we use the Matchbox Recommender module in Azure Machine Learning Studio. These th last three modules were based on the AdventureWorks database um, and therefore were all surrounding the bike shop scenario. The last module, the Azure Marketplace, was highlighting the fact or highlighting the options that you have as a developer um, how to integrate recommendations into your app, into your website, using the recommendations API from the Azure Marketplace. Thank you for your attention and have fun with rec building recommendation systems in Azure.